Hello, and welcome to Enlightened Empaths, your community for the spiritually awakened, where we discuss, explore, and connect with fellow empaths, healers, intuitives, and seekers. Hello, empaths, and happy new year. We hope you enjoyed last week's show with the Astro Twins. I know Denise and I were quickly taking notes. There was so much wonderful information they imparted to us. If you haven't heard it, please take a minute to check it out. They gave us a lot of insight into some coming trends that we should see in this new year that that really made me hopeful and kind of worried at the same time. How about you, Denise? I I agree. And I think that the hopeful part's winning, which is good. Uh, But I also think so much of it depends on how we want to perceive this, how much we want to look at it through personal opinion taking back our own power and deciding what we really want. One of the things that's been coming up a lot, a lot in readings, a sign that Spirit gave me is they'll show people being escorted to the front of this long, long line saying, excuse me, excuse me. And when they get to the front of the line, it's almost like, well, what do you really want for you? And this comes up a lot for folks who have, you know, been the ultimate caretakers. They've thrown lifelines, they've thrown life rings, and they're really trying to learn that, you know, self-care, it's, it's a, beautiful label to put on things, but this feels different. This feels like getting really true with what, what do I really want for myself in, and where I'm taking my life next. And I'm hoping that 2022 is going to bring that on for all of us. Yeah. Getting to the truth of who we are and what we really want right now and understanding that we really are co-creators with the universe. And I think that's, I think that's really, really important to think about because usually around this time of the year, we will do a show on manifesting and how to manifest or do a vision board or a goal book. And one of the questions we often get after we post one of those shows is I would love to do a goal book or a vision board, but I don't really know what I want to manifest, or I'm afraid to manifest this because what if these ramifications happen? And so I think it's just a great idea right now to take time to think what what do I really want right now? And on a level that might not align with what other people want for you. And I'm not saying throw your life up in the air and, and run for the hills. I'm not saying that at all. But I think the twins mentioned this and Jen has mentioned this. Right now until about early February, there's a lot of shift going on, but it's a time of reflection and saying, you know, really going within. A lot of people are feeling that nudge and again, the the Astro Twins brought this up, that there's creativity coming this year. And sometimes we get locked in with, oh, creativity means I have to paint or I have to draw or I have to do clay or I have to be a writer. But I think really embracing what the creativity means for you in the sense of it might be through your gardening, it might be through movement, it might be through uh, photographs, It, it can be through anything, it can be through music. But when you, I think that's one of the things that I'm hoping to do is really reconnect with with that creativity within myself and say, how can I make this a part of my everyday life or part of my my existence? Because I think it brings that balance that we're all aching for so much. One of the things that I think distracts us from that are like these outlets we have for distracting ourselves like phones and email and text and, 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 you know, um, in December, my youngest daughter had to take a final exam and they had to sit in the classroom with no phones, no computers, nothing from 8am to 1pm. And I picked her up at one o'clock and she was about to come out of her skin. And she was like, mom, we all finished the exam in an hour. And then they just had to sit there and like stare at themselves <laughs> for wow. the time. And I said, well, did you have paper? Could you doodle? And she was like, no, we had nothing. So I had packed her some like Hershey kisses and some mints just so she'd have something while she was taking the test. And she said, I literally, she pulls out her book bag and shows me, I cut out with my fingers and the Hershey kiss wrappers. I made like little origami shapes and snowflakes. <laughs> Anyway, we talked about it for a while and I was thinking, when is the last time I had to just sit with nothing, you know, with nothing to distract me? 
So I said to her, well, so then what did you do? Cause you can't make origami shapes out of Hershey Kisser wrappers for, you know, four hours. And she said, well, I played with my hair and I tried a Dutch braid and a French braid. And, and she said, and then I just sat there and I got lost in my thoughts and it was kind of nice. Oh yeah. And doesn't that make you think like how little time we give ourselves to get lost in our thoughts? Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And with the self-soothing that comes with a lot of the electronics, I was, when I was journaling the other morning, I thought this is a pacifier. If this is, I mean, a lot of times if, do you ever catch yourself if you're upset or you're trying to avoid something, you'll reach for your phone and start scrolling? Sure. That's what or, Pinterest is for. <laughs> and I think that that's, we, we are very busy. We're very focused. We're doing all these other things. But then I think there's, a, a, they've done research on this. There's a, when you get the bang on your phone, it releases a, a jolt of dopamine and it makes you want to spend more time interacting with your phone and you get that or, or social media or whatever it is that you, you're involved with. And then if you add in gaming and you add in all these other things, that's a whole lot. Well, it's not even the phone. I mean, I think sometimes books can be a, a distraction, TV, talking on the phone, all of these things. Even when I do sit in silence to meditate, that's with a purpose. It's to meditate. I'm breathing. I'm doing a guided meditation. I'm focusing on a mantra. But just to sit and allow ourselves to be present with our own wandering, rambling thoughts, I think that's really important, especially if you're trying to really get to the nuts and bolts of who you are, why you're here and what you want to co-create now. I think we need to gift ourselves with that time to just aimlessly wander through our mind. Oh, I love that aimlessly wandering through there. It's kind of a minefield sometimes, but I can aimlessly wander in there. Well, after <laughs> midnight, it can be a little bit of a minefield, but during the day, <laughs> you know, I had to go somewhere with my extended family and so my sister picked me up and I sat in the back seat with her boys and I was so quiet back there. And she said, you okay, Samantha, you're so quiet. And I said, I have not sat in the back seat of a car and I don't know how long, just looking out the window. And she said, yeah, it's nice sometimes to be a passenger of life, isn't it? And I was like, yes, it is. Like, it's, it's nice to get out of that driver's seat. <laughs> I had a... a one of my sons gave me a ride somewhere and I that's what I said I said oh this is what it's become now it's driving Miss Daisy <laughs> <laughs> well it's not so much that though it's just giving ourselves that that gift of space to not focus on distractions to not focus on the shoulds or the to-do list or making the most of our time I always feel so pressured internally to always be doing something, to be on, to be reacting, responding, connecting, finishing up something. And so one of my goals this year, and I don't know if I'll achieve it because I have set this goal before and failed miserably, is to just learn to be more, just to, just to kind of sit and do nothing. I have a hard time sitting and doing nothing. I can't even watch TV and do nothing. Well, I think part of that though, and for, for you and I, but also for a lot of our the people who are listening to the show, we have that hyper responsibility gene. We've been so responsible for so much for so long that it really is a learned behavior to try to figure out how to shut that off and just be sitting quiet or not do something or not be busy or, you know, go for a walk and enjoy the walk, not think, oh, did I make all the steps on my counter today? Did I you know, am I working at a quick enough pace? Did I listen to the right podcast while I was walking? I, I I truly do think it's a learned behavior. Yeah, I do too. Even weather. I had I had decided that a Sunday over break was going to be our movie day where I just I love to have those days once every couple of months where we just stay in our jammies and we watch movies and I make a lot of appetizers. And I woke up on our scheduled movie day and it was so sunny and freakish, freakishly warm outside. I thought it's December, it is 72 degrees, it would be sinful to stay inside we have to go to the beach we have to walk a trail we have to do something yes do you ever, do you ever feel that weather pressure 
Uh, oh, all the time. And the other part of that, though, is being flexible enough with this time alone. So, and we've, you and I have talked about this off of the show of, oh, one of the benefits to working for yourself is you should have more control over your schedule and you should be able to do this. But when you put in family and schedulers and, and business meetings and all these other things that come to be, it really is much more structured than people might imagine. And you'll sit in a beautiful day and look out the window and say, wow, it's a beautiful day. I work for myself. Why am I sitting inside? Because you still are working. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I think when that beautiful day does arrive or that opportunity comes in and you are able to, to grab it, that's another whole part of this lesson is to gift yourself with that time away from the rigidity of a schedule. Yeah, I do too. And I think it's important to model that for the little people in our lives as well. I agree. I agree. So that they don't, they don't carry that on. You know, I know as a kid, my mom would leave for the day and she would write a whole list of chores we had to do. And to this day, when I hear the garage door open, a little part of me inside goes, oh, did I fold the laundry? Did I vacuum? <laughs> You know, there's always, I, I've carried that into my adulthood of you always got to be working. You always got to be producing. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, listening to the Astro twins talk about moving into this water year. And I know it's tiger as well, but water does make me think of just going with the flow and being more chill. And some of this stuff moving into Pisces, do you like how specific that was? Yeah. But I do feel that there's this invitation to just kind of calm down and slow down and go within. Right. That might be different for all of us. For somebody, it might be mucking out in the garden or doing something, reading a book or writing a letter. It does not matter. But I do think what does matter is giving ourselves permission to do what brings us joy. Yeah. Yeah, because that's where we're going to be able to manifest our new year goals. Now I have one of my kids and I won't throw anyone under the bus. I'm not going to use names. But one of my kids is becoming very skeptical about some of my metaphysical stuff. So I'll be like, oh, it's the new moon. What should we manifest? And she'll be like, nah, nah, nah. so I'm trying to prove to her <laughs> that all this manifesting stuff does work. So I said to her, this is over the break. I said, Gosh, I have not sold any tiger's eye bracelets in a long time. So watch, I'm going to make a bunch of tiger's eye bracelets and then I'm going to sell some. And she was like, what? What are you talking about? That's not going to work. I'm like, I tr trust me, it works every time. It is the weirdest thing. Mm -hmm. So I went up to my little office and I made a bunch of tiger's eye bracelets. Sure enough, that week I sold a bunch of tiger's eye bracelets and I printed out all the order forms and showed them to her. And she was like, that's a fluke. And she said, what, what else have you not sold a lot of? And I said, well, you know, I only sold four chakra bags this week. So I spent an evening making some chakra bags and she did help me bless the yarn and work with that. So, you know, she's got one foot in one foot. Eh, I don't know about this bomb thing. Sure enough, Denise, I sold a bunch of chakra bags. I have you that. noticed that in your life where you'll be like, gosh, I haven't heard from so like so-and-so usually calls me around this time for a reading. I haven't heard from her. And then the next week she'll reach out for a reading. Does that happen to you? Yes. Yes, that happens a lot. And I think for so many of the people listening, that's their real, that's their reality as well. Is, Doesn't that oh, prove that we're co-creators? Oh, I think so. And we're tapping into that energy where we're sending out a beacon or, because I used to worry about that a little bit. I'd think about someone when they'd come to mind and then they'd call me for a reading. I was like, uh-oh, did I like throw out a, a net and say, here I am, you need a reading. And they thought, no, it's just that I'm, we're both picking up on that energy that it's time to reconnect. Yeah. Well, if you do a deep dive into the CIA's remote viewing studies, it's all declassified now and you can click online and read them. It's pretty cool. A little scary to go to the CIA website because you wonder like, hmm, am I flagged? But everything is there. You can read it. And when they were working with their psychics, what they have these charts and it shows on the bottom picture, like the bottom of an ocean, right? So that's like a little chart. They have a little wave and it says all unknown information. And then they have this little V arrow that dips down into that little ocean. And what the report was saying is that remote viewers, which is just a fancy word for psychics are able to dip into that known information 
through conscious thought and meditation. But their point is everything that has happened, that is happening, that is going to happen is known in some cosmic way. And so I don't know if when we, you know, make a bracelet and then suddenly a bunch of people are like, oh, I need that bracelet. Or when we think I haven't heard from so-and-so and suddenly they call us. I don't know if it's each of us tugging on each other's cords or if it's each of us diving into that ocean of known potential. I think it's the ocean. I think it's the big dive because that would go along with you know, how many times, uh, thank you everyone for being so patient with how many times I've said tap into that collective consciousness because that's what it is. It's all floating around out there and we can, we can pop right in and get some information. Yeah. And so that's why it's really important to be positive about the new year, even if the, the twins did mention some things that make me go, hmm, if we stay positive as a whole, then we can co-create that positive outcome. Right. And, and, get, and give our permit, ourselves permission to grow and evolve in a new direction, because I think that that's been a very strong feeling for a lot of us too, is I'm really, I've kind of outgrown some aspects of who I, I've been what do I really want to become? What do I want to evolve into? And, you know, they had mentioned the start of a new cycle, the end of the eclipse season, starting a new eclipse season. Jen has brought, has brought that up a couple of times as well when we've had her come on. And I've thought about that a lot recently of 19 years from now, when I look back and they say, oh, they, we're finishing up a, an eclipse season. What have I done with that 19 years? Have I really embrace the opportunity to be here and to use that time to make the most of it. And maybe that's because I'm older and I'm thinking, oh shit, I might not have many 19 year cycles left. And, and that's not being fear-based, it's being honest. So I might have one, I might have two, I might have one and a half. But part of it is not leaving the present. I mean, I do think we need to be present in all of this, but also opening up to so much more. We don't have to be stuck in those same restraints. Right. And letting go of some of that fear. Yes. What do you say? I have so many people who email me and say, you know, I don't know what I want. I don't know what my passions are. And I have a really hard time answering them because I've always known what I want. And I've always had really strong passions. What do you say to anyone listening? Who's like, yeah, I, I'm not happy where I am, but I don't know where I want to go or what I want. And that's a pretty prevalent thing that comes up in a lot of readings if someone is at a crossroads or they're feeling like they need a career shift or they're wondering about starting a business or you know, really stepping out of their comfort zone. And what I found fairly recently is it might take a little while to get there, but on some intrinsic level, people do know what they want, but they're trying to figure it, they're trying to shut off that logical brain and either rewrite some tapes of being told that they couldn't, they shouldn't, they wouldn't, or they're trying to figure out something that can't be figured out logically. So especially when it comes to stepping out of that comfort zone, I've always been in a linear position. This is what I do. This is what, how I work on the planet. When you talk to people or when you talk to yourself or when you journal or when you meditate, I think sometimes it's that fear and vulnerability that's so deep, way, way in there. But I, I, in my heart, I think we do all know on some level what we really want, but we might not feel comfortable giving voice to it. That's beautifully said. And don't you think sometimes just giving voice to it is enough? Like that's the first step? Yes, 100% yeah. yes. Yeah. Even if it's scary, even if it means you might try something and fail, you're not going to know unless you try. You know, there's been so many things I've tried and failed at, and I used to look at them as failures. And now I look at them as attempts and I'm proud of myself for trying. And I try to be, uh, I think I've done enough face plants in my life that I've gotten pretty good at them. And then when you don't do the face plant, it's like, oh, oh, this has potential. This could really grow. This could become something. But the face plants make it so much more enjoyable when it really works. It's, it's so true. 
It is so true. People who have had struggle in their life, who have had failures, quote unquote, who are face plants, as you call it, they tend to be more empathic. They tend to be more authentic and they tend to appreciate the success when it does come. So one of the things that came up the other day when I was either journaling or, or whatever, I, was, I don't remember where, when it came through, but I was thinking about that whole thought of, you know how they say, be your true self, be authentic, show your true self to the world. And, and you know, we're being bombarded with media. We've talked about that and body image, self-concept. There's so many other things. But don't you think that's really like one of the biggest goals that we can show is this is me, you get me or you don't. And for empaths and for so many of us who have been either closeted or hiding or so sensitive that it hurt to come out of that protective shell, that's a big, big lesson to try to approach. That is such a big lesson to really speak your truth and be your authentic self, especially when you know others around you are going to put that label on you of weirdo or different. And yet, I don't know, for me, I can't, I can't hide anymore no. who I am, you know? And so when people say stuff to me, I'll say, well, I'm going to wait on that because Mercury's in retrograde or I'm not going to, I'm not going to start that new thing with Venus in retrograde right now. I, I, I just put it all out there and I'm just, oh, or I'm going to make those tiger eye bracelets because damn it. I know someone wants to buy them. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, I always say weird stuff to my kids because they know exactly who I am, but I just mean just chatting up someone you barely know. I mm -hmm. don't really hide it anymore. And, and that feels really, really good. But I think that also comes with age, don't you? I don't think I, I, I do. gotten there in my 20s if I wanted to. Right. I, and I, I didn't want to in my 20s. No, no. And that just goes back to sometimes when I'm doing readings with people and they'll share their age or they'll share. And my logical brain will say, oh, that makes perfect sense. Your 40s are a decade when you really start to come into your own. And you, when you start looking at the the human aspects or the cultural or the social or whatever, however we want to describe it, there are certain things that we all go through in certain parts of our life. So, I mean, look how much different your life is as the parent of teenagers with independence versus the parent of toddlers. But if you were sitting in a room full of mothers right now that had little tiny people, you would be able to relate to exactly where they are. Right. But when you had the toddlers, you couldn't really think about and someone's talking about having teenage children, uh, um, personal opinion, personal experience, I couldn't, I thought it would be different for me when I got to that stage because of the choices I was making when they were little people. Right, right. That's so true. I mean, and yet we still impose restrictions on ourselves. I, I saw a woman who was about 25, 28, and she had blonde hair like me, but she had dyed the whole under part violet purple. Mm -hmm. And I thought it looked so cool. And I said, I would love to do that, but I think I'm too old now. And she said, you're never too old for cool hair. <laughs> <laughs> and yet I think sometimes we do that, don't you? Where we put these, these silly preconceived restrictions on ourselves, whether they're frivolous, like the color of your hair, or they're more serious. Like I have a friend who's, gosh, how old is she now? 49, 50. And she's thinking about going back to school to completely change her career. And she keeps saying, I'm too old. And I'm like, you are not too old. That is not, that is not too old to go back to school and change your, your career. And I kept giving her all these examples of people I know who have done that. And she was like, yeah, and she's kind of on the fence and thinking about it. So I think sometimes we put these illusionary restrictions on ourselves, no matter our age. Which comes back to that fear and vulnerability. If we can come up with an excuse not to do it, and I'm not saying your friend is because that's that's a big decision to make. But if we can stay in that fear-based place, we don't have to take action. Oh, I heard the coolest thing the other day is someone, I was listening to something and the man said, one simple thing you can do that will really make you face yourself is when you say, I can't do that, change it to, I won't do that. 
and feel the difference energetically. And he says, oh, I can't be there. I won't be there. It's completely different. You're owning it when you say, I won't. Because you're, that's and he, I think the way he was describing it was that was a stepping stone to being able to say no in your life or to set some boundaries. But I've, I've used that a lot in my own thinking patterns lately. And it's, it's amazing how many times I'll catch myself getting ready to go, oh, I can't, and then I'll stop. And I'll think, oh, is it that I can't do this or I just won't because I don't want to? Oh, I like that. That's a great tip. I saw something else funny on social media. It said JOMO. You've heard of FOMO, right? Fear of missing mm-hmm. out. All right. Well, right. there's apparently a new one called JOMO, the joy of missing out. <laughs> and I thought, ooh, <laughs> our enlightened empath listeners would totally resonate with that. Oh, I could be president of that club. <laughs> <laughs> Except I don't like clubs, so that would be a problem. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Well, I'm more of an ambivert. So sometimes I have FOMO and sometimes I have JOMO, but I love, I love that there's now a really fun acronym for that. But as we do step into this new year and this new energy and this kind of pressure sometimes, because, you know, people will say, what are your new year's resolutions? What are your goals for this year? And sometimes I'm like, my goal is to get through this year. Okay. That's my goal. <laughs> That's a good goal. Considering what the last couple of years have been like, that's a damn good goal. Yeah. Sometimes there's just that extra pressure, but I do think it's important to not necessarily just set outer goals. You know, like I'm going to increase my income by this percentage, or I'm going to get very serious about my finances or investments, or I'm going to focus on relationships or healing this. I think it would be a good idea to just maybe walk away from that for a while and just think, okay, who am I right now in 2022? And what does this version of me want right now? See, I love that. We've been swimming against the current for so long. Maybe it's time to just float for a little while. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of just keep swimming, just, just float and enjoy and look at, start to pay attention to the distractions that you are inviting into your life. I could be the president of that club, Denise. <laughs> I'm very good at distracting myself from being still. Even, like I said, even when I meditate, I always meditate with a purpose. Do you? I feel like you're better at just letting yourself go with the meditation. I do best when I'm away from the distractions so if I'm outside if I'm walking if I'm by water if I'm have my hands in the dirt if I'm doing something outside I seem to do better if not so a good example is the power went out so there was no connectivity to anything for a while and it you realize how much you are dependent on that how much oh, I'm just going to check my, oh, no, because the internet and the power were both out. I, I didn't want to just sit on my phone. I could have gotten 4G, I guess, but I, I didn't. Um, and it, But it really made you realize how often you reach for, oh, I'll just Google that, or let me check the weather online, or I wonder if that email came through yet. We're constantly being pulled back into that web. And I think to be able to learn to shut it off, even if it's for five minutes, 10 minutes, I think another thing is I've started playing more music again, which is a great thing for me. That helps me be more present and shut things off is rather than always listening to a podcast or a show or something else is just to listen to music and kind of float with that a little bit. I think floating is becoming a theme here. I do too. It's a good one. No, I mean, like when I meditate, I usually have a purpose. Like I'm going to talk to my guide. I'm going to get answers to this question I've been worried about. I'm going to get information for this friend who's going through this issue. Oh, see, I never do that. I just free fall. I just see where do I end up? See, I think that's good. That's one of my goals is to do, I guess I'll call it a free fall floating meditation. (laughs) But if I'm going to do uh, like with an intention, if I'm saying, to do a shamanic journey or to find an answer that feels very different to me than just like listening to the theta, getting in the zone, doing deep breathing. 
it, it feels very different. Wow, that makes a lot of sense. I think it's important just to give ourselves permission to recognize how difficult these last few years have been on all of us. Really and truly, we've, we've all been through a lot. Some of you have lost people. Some of you have had disagreements or uh, political divides with family and friends. We've all witnessed really, really difficult events going on in the world. I think it's been a hard couple of years. And I think it's okay to recognize that and say, that's had an impact on me. I'm very fatigued. I'm very worried. I'm very anxious about this, 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 and that that's going on. And I think it's going to be crucial as we prepare to be co-creators with this new year to give ourselves some timeouts. Put yourself in timeout and just chill. I love that. I, I love the way you described it. And I love the energy of that. It's beautiful. Well, I don't know about that. It's a little rambling, but it's just where my thoughts have been going is just kind of getting off that hamster wheel of got to do, got to perform, got to be on, got to help, got to reach out to everyone. You got to be there, got to be on for everyone. It's, it's really, really hard. And I think it's important to recognize if you are in that same mode, you know, that, that I have been in for 2021, you know, that I'm trying to get off of in in 2022. It's very, very rare just with two podcasts and the online store and clients and teaching and my children and two parents in two different homes and having to worry about feeding them and paying their bills and taking care of them. It's pulled me in so many different directions that I've had a hard time just calming down and slowing down Unless I have, like, I have to actually schedule in like, oh, I'm going to meditate right now, or, oh, I'm going to pray right now, because otherwise I can get pulled into that to-do list. I agree that music is a really great way to get out of that. Being in nature is another really helpful one, or, or just lounging in a bath for 20 minutes with no distractions as you just sit there, or just petting your dog. I can get lost in my Lily's eyes. We have little soulful moments together that Aww. I find very relaxing or taking your pets for walks, or, you know, just going by yourself, going for long drives, dancing when you're all alone or singing. Nobody wants to hear me sing, but I love to sing. Those are all very <laughs> relaxing, fun things that can kind of get us, get us back into this energy of just being centered and calm and friends with our own selves. And that I think is what this energy coming up for 2022 would be really beneficial if we could follow that, if we could re try to remember that. So have you ever, I have to go back to the meditation for a second. Have you ever gone into it with just show me highest and best what I need to know, or please bring me to the place I need to see, or do you ever, I guess that yes. goes back to the free fall floaty, doesn't it? No, I have definitely done that, but I consider that meditation with purpose. Oh. I mean, I have never just closed my eyes and done nothing. How about raising the power when we do medit like mediumship stuff where you're just raising your vibration, you're breathing, you're pulling your energy up to connect with spirit. How about that? Yeah, no, because I'm focused on lifting and raising my vibrations, oh. drawing in energy from uh, the soles of my feet, from the earth and lifting it up to the higher dimensions and spinning my chakras. No, I'm super focused on concentrated <laughs> then too. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, I don't, I can't remember a time where I'm just closing my eyes and I'm like, hmm, let me just sit in this dark, silent, alone place. I don't do that. I always have a purpose. Okay. But, well, and maybe you're just wired. I mean, have you, do you do that? Do you just sit and close your eyes and stare at the back of your lids? I'll, I'll stare at my third eye. Yes. And see, yeah. see if anything floats by, but it's interesting as I did, uh, a regression with someone months ago now, an older person who got very relaxed, went in the zone. Was it a, a regression type X? I've, I've shared this before that the, the soul directed you, spirit will bring you where you need to be. But what was really interesting is this man is very bright, very, very open to this stuff. But he said, wow, this is what meditation must feel like. I'm so relaxed and there's, I'm not focused on anything and it was he said it with such awe and I think that's what we're we're striving towards is shutting off all the 
extraneous stuff and just being in that little soft bubble of darkness, right? Yes. Yeah. I think that's really important. And I, it, you know, if you're like me and you have that anxious mercury led mind where you do have to have a purpose, I think that's okay. I think that's a great place to start. It served me well, for sure. All I'm saying is I want to just get away from that energy of I've got to finish this book. I've got to listen to this podcast, even stuff I enjoy. I feel like I put pressure on, right. I got to meditate and connect with my guide and see what's up with him. Like, no, no, you don't just sit there and be. Yeah. That's a really good point. Haven't you been uh, so many people, you and I have talked about this. So many other people are talking about this. We need to get back into having a little more fun. Like yes. there needs to be some fun, damn it. <laughs> and not, oh, I mean, some people, their fun is that big ass concert in the middle of thousands of people jumping up and down. That's their fun. And, and the pandemic waning and moving into things opening up more as the year progresses is going to allow them to do that. Then there's the, the Jomo club here that it's like, wow, I don't have to do that if I don't want to. Whereas in the past, it would have been, oh, there's a what happened was some some tickets came up for this show. I've seen this person in concert so many times. One of my favorite performers. It was going to be next, late next spring here in Maine. And I got online and I secured the tickets. And then I just kept hitting refresh and hanging onto those tickets. They were great seats. It was a nice venue. And then I, I stopped and I thought, do I really need to have that experience again? Do I really want to be in that venue? Do I need, and I, I kind of got very, very reflective about it. And then I didn't buy the tickets. I thought, I don't need to have that again. And I, I didn't feel the same. I think I was, I was going like, oh, I love this person. I want to see them again. I've enjoyed it every time I've gone. But maybe that's part of this, this new energy coming in is it's time to bring in some, some new experiences, not just reiterate the old ones. Mm, that's really important. You know what weighed on me a lot over the holidays is how busy everyone I knew was. My book club did not meet in December. Nobody could find a date where we could all meet because everybody was so busy and pulled in different directions and half the book club admitted they hadn't even read the book. Mm -hmm. I have another group. We stopped meeting when the pandemic hit, but it's a, it's a manifesting club. And we usually meet once a month at a restaurant. And one of the women had said, let's, let's restart that in December to kick off the new year. And Oh yeah, great. We picked a date. And one person texted and said, I cannot go that date. And honestly, I can't find an open date on my calendar in December. Can we shoot for January? And everyone else was like, me too. I'm so glad you said that because I felt guilty canceling, but I'm so busy. My neighborhood usually has a little gathering that was canceled because everyone was so busy. It just made me sad that this is supposed to be such a joyful time, like celebrate the holidays. And we're all so darn busy. Mm -hmm. And I, I do want to move away from that. In, in the new year is that that glorification of busy. And I don't know how we can all do that because it's not me, you know, it's everyone I know. And I don't know, is that the law of assumption where I'm just reflecting that? Cause that's my experience. I don't know, but everyone I know is feeling so busy and so overwhelmed that we're really not enjoying the moment. Right. That's a lot to think about, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And, and I, again, could it be the season that, that my friends and I are in right now? It could be, but I don't, I don't think there's a busier season than when you have little kids. And I don't remember any of us feeling this busy. So I do feel like something is shifting as a whole. I don't think it's just, you know, moms and dads at all. I have a lot of, I have several friends who don't have children and they're all feeling that same way. Is it that we're all on all the time? And our bosses and directors and coworkers know they can text or email us at any time, even if it's Sunday at 10 p.m. Um, is it because there's just more distractions out there? I don't know. But don't, don't you feel that people you know are just like little octopi pulled in all these different places? Yes, very much so. And, and trying to keep up. And, and it's a, a very, at times for many people, a very frenetic pace. Yeah. And there's that pressure. Like I was saying to you 
around Christmas time when my daughters were like, I have to babysit this day, or I have to go to my friend's house. Do you have anything planned? Do you have anything planned this date? I'm like, no, I have nothing planned. Like this is the holiday we're supposed to just tuck in and be together. What, what do you want me to plan? And I think that's what a lot of people feel this pressure to plan something and then post it and then plan something else and then move on to the next thing instead of just being. I was listening to someone speak on and they had had this big elaborate uh, party and they had catered and they had done this and the caterers brought in certain furniture and displays. It was all set up and very, very high end, very costly. The woman had done it for her birthday. And the person who was interviewing said, well, why? And she said, because it looked good on the grams. And, and I thought, wow. <laughs> I mean, I was walking by myself listening, and I giggled because I thought, wow, that is really a thing for a lot of people. How is it going to be perceived on social media? How will people see me or my life based on these pictures or things that I choose to share or not share? That's yeah. sobering to me. That is sobering. I don't have that button inside of me. I don't know what that's called, but I, I don't feel the need to share like that. And I know you don't either. No. But I feel for people who do, because I think that's a lot of pressure. Yes. Yes, I do. I, I agree. And I, and and I have other buttons this. and other pressures, but that's not, <laughs> that's not one of them. Yeah, there, there's plenty of buttons here. Yes. And they seem to sometimes go off all on their own. Well, we hope that whatever your goals are for the new year, that you listen to this. And hopefully if you enjoyed it, that you think about it and think about where am I being pulled in my life? What distractions are, am I letting into my life? And some distractions are good. You know, I'm not, we're not saying get rid of all distractions. I think what we're just inviting you to think about is, are those distractions serving you or are you serving those distractions? Ooh. And to really start to give yourself that grace of space to go within and say, okay, if I am a co-creator with my universe, what do I want to create now? Who am I now in this stage of my life? And if I could have any goal come true this year, what would it be? And try to make it a fun goal, not necessarily I'm going to get promoted this year, although that's a good goal. I'm just saying, let's try to invite more fun and play into our life this year. We deserve it. We certainly do. Samantha and I are really excited to offer our mediumship class again in February. It'll be on Thursday evenings from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the dates would be February, well, those first, those four. Uh, February 3rd, be... 10th, 17th, and 24th. Thank you. And yes. this is a great introduction course to really make your connection with spirit, to hone your skills. It's an introduction course. If you're already working as a medium, you already know how to tune into your guide. You already know how to connect with people in spirit. This, this is very introductory. And we do offer a second half to it, but just please know, we do have a survey we can send to you if you're interested. You can send either Samantha a message at Samantha, samanthafay.com, myself, Denise, at thegratefulmessenger.com, or our combined email, which is enlightenedempaths at gmail.com. Yeah. And just as a reminder, what makes this class unique is each week you're partnered up with someone new from class and given really, really excellent practical and instructive exercises. So you can learn what kind of medium you are, how you tune in, what your strengths are. And so it's a great way not only to learn how to develop your mediumship, but also to connect with other beginner mediums and really start to create a community. At the end of the course, you are included in our private Facebook page where you can link in with all the other students who have taken this course. People will jump on there and say like, oh, I would like to practice with someone this weekend or anyone want to share a reading with me. And so it's just a lovely way to continue to grow your community of, of spiritual minded friends. A great way to meet and spend time with like-minded people, incredible way. We have people that have taken the class that have become 
dear, dear friends and, and colleagues. Yeah. Yeah. And we just, we love doing it. So we hope we see you in class. It's going to be the four Thursdays in February, as Denise said. And again, you can email me, Samantha at SamanthaFay.com or Denise at TheGratefulMessenger.com for more information. Thank you guys so much for listening. We hope you have a wonderful week. And remember, as always, to show up, do great work, and share your light. Take care.